This is my Lenovo IdeaPad 115iBY, which is quite a potato with its Intel Celeron N2840 that makes an 18 year old Gorgio Duo look like a top tier CPU and Intel HD graphics, whatever the heck that means, that rival the G100, yet it can run quite a few games, ranging from Wolfenstein 3D to GTA 5 with a few tweaks, but can it run Crisis? You know, the game that made so many computers explode back in 2007 that it gave birth to a legendary meme and visuals that are better than those of the modern day poorly optimized piles of shit when you max out the settings, let's find out. I decided to use the low settings to minimize the chance of an explosion, I even went as far as disabling the blood effects and I went for the very crispy for 1995 resolution of 800 by 600 And well, it wasn't too bad actually, considering that the average person back in 2007 played this with 10 FPS using these settings provided they're lucky enough that their computer didn't explode, seeing 25 to 30 FPS and even more than that sometimes is really nice. Then again, the fact that my laptop didn't catch on fire or explode is impressive enough, but that's in the cool benchmark area. Once I tried the plane mission however, which is more demanding, we saw drops to the slowest, well, the absolute best that you'd expect in crisis from an average 2007 PC. So can we, the potato master race, do something to run crisis? Well, the most basic thing that you can do is you can right click on the game's shortcut and go to properties. Then, in the target bar, press space and type DX9 as I'm doing it and click on apply. This will make the game run in DirectX 9 instead of DirectX 10 which gave a few more FPS with no change to the graphics. But there is more. In documents, my games, crisis, you will find the config file which is the game.cfg file and you can open it with notepad. The only thing that we can lower from here is the resolution. Now, the lowest resolution that works with no problems is 640x480, even lower resolutions are also possible, however you will have to play in windowed mode. Trust me, I've tried it in full screen but the game still run at 640x480 anyway. Oh well, as you can see right now, the game is running at 320x240, so if you've wondered how Crisis looks like at the same resolution as the Nintendo 64, well, here you go. Also, there is a weird issue at below 640x480 with what the game thinks the mouse cursor position is in the menus compared to the actual cursor position, so in the menus I highly recommend using your keyboard instead. To be honest, I don't recommend playing at below 640x480 because of the aforementioned issues unless you're extremely desperate, there isn't really any point in doing so at least on this laptop, the game runs well enough at 640x480 with DirectX 9 anyway mostly at 30 to 45 fps in the nice benchmark area. Sadly in the plane mission the fps still drop quite heavily, that's a bit of a shame. Ok, so far so good with the basic tricks, because from here onwards things are gonna become quite amusing. Back in 2018, Lospec Gamer made a video on Crisis 1, where he showed how to make Crisis 1 look like Crisis minus 9000, along with a link to all those cool commands mentioned in his video, which you're supposed to add into an autoexec.cfg file that you're supposed to create in your game's directory to make them work. This video has sadly been hidden and put in a playlist along with the rest of Lospec Gamer's potato PC content but I will share the link to the video in the video description if you want to know what every command does. To save you guys the pain of trying to figure out how to make that auto exec file, which commands should I use for my extreme toaster etc, I made a mod out of the commands, which I will share in the video description as well. Now, because all the commands combined together can make the game much more difficult to play, I divided the mod into a very low end preset which downgrades the graphics while ensuring that the game remains fully playable and an extreme low end preset for the desperate ones or those who want a nice laugh. One command that I didn't include in the mod is the E-Flux one, which removes all the animals from the game, as for some reason, when I tried to use this command on my laptop, 
What would happen is that the RAM utilization would briefly spike up resulting in not only the game but also the entire operating system completely freezing. Not sure if it's a bug with the game or my laptop itself but I don't want to kill somebody's PC ok? Anyway, to install the mod, first choose which preset you want to use, then go to your games directory and drag and drop the autoexec.cfg file from the mod there. If you've chosen the extreme low end preset from your games directory, you also need to go to game, config and open one of the diff something.cfg files depending on what difficulty you're playing the game with. For example, I play with easy difficulty because I'm a noob, so I will open the diff easy.cfg file with notepad of course. You need to scroll down until the very bottom of the config, then in the mod, open the add to text document and paste these commands exactly as I'm doing it. The reason why I did not include these commands in the extreme low end auto exec file and instead we're pasting them in this config file is explained by Lospec Gamer in his video. Anyway, this is how the game looks like with the extreme low end preset. Yeah, I want you people. I mean the trees are gone, everything looks like molten plastic, the enemies sink in the ground and stay there when they die, none of the objects are rendered unless you're like one centimeter away from them, which is what makes it so difficult to play like this because while yes the enemies are now far more visible, but at the same time when you try to shoot at them, you can't tell if there's an object in front of you or not, but hey, at least you're getting 60 FPS with a few drops to 50 fps and even below that actually but I don't care it's 60 fps. What? You don't like these beautiful RTX 16k graphics? Well that's why I included the very low end preset and while yes the game still looks worse than Quake 1, at least the draw distance is normal so the playability isn't affected and we're getting pretty good fps still, even the frame drops in the plane mission are fixed. Oh for god's sake. But guys, it doesn't matter that we're playing with awful visuals here. What matters is that, apparently, a potato laptop with a super slow Celeron can run Crisis. But that's not the end, because in 2011, the second Crisis game came out. So in the next video, we will see if my Lenovo IdeaPad 115 IBY can also run Crisis 2.